So I'm drinking my last Tim Hortons coffee, leaving Toronto for the Middle East and North Africa to train journalists on human rights reporting, and this is my video diary for JHR. And what a great place to start, standing on the balcony of my hotel, overlooking Tahrir Square, which was of course the site of the revolution that triggered unprecedented press freedom. So the question now is what is the media in Egypt doing with that press freedom and does it include human rights reporting? We're at the University of Alexandria, training journalists on human rights reporting. What skills as a journalist do you need to have to report on human That's rights? That's my training partner, Catherine Shepard so, from JHR. Yes, what skills In Egypt, many of the journalists are confused between advocacy and journalism. They want to put their own opinion in the stories. This training really breaks it down, giving journalists a step-by-step -step process to produce fair, objective stories. In both Alexandria and Cairo, I was so impressed by the enthusiasm of young journalists who are eager to embrace an independent media. Leaving Egypt, going to Jordan. So I'm here at the Jordan Media Institute where I'm teaching an advanced course on human rights reporting. And I've done training all over West Africa, sometimes in schools made out of mud bricks with metal roofs that leak with students don't have, or journalists don't have notepads or pens, let alone the internet or computers. So to be in this amazing facility with computers hooked up to the internet, a projector, it's incredible. Resources are not the problem here. The problem, in many cases, is censorship. Sometimes it's government censorship, other times it's self-censorship. Journalists often avoid sensitive topics that may get them in trouble with the government or royal family. It's a step-by-step -step checklist for doing your story. Through our training, this student, Mustafa, wrote a story on the use of children to sell illegal pharmaceuticals on the streets. It was my first time to do a journalistic investigation. It was very useful to me to do this training, uh, to get to get uh, brave. I was thrilled that a Jordanian judge and expert on international human rights law agreed to speak to the journalists. Next stop, West Bank. The occupied Palestinian territory is not an easy place to do this training. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict began in the early 20th century. Today's journalists have seen it all. Surveillance cameras, security gates, racist graffiti, and violent attacks. And one of the objectives here is to look at the international human rights obligations of the authority, whether it's Israel as the occupying power or the Palestinian Authority in areas where it has effective control of the area. And for journalists, the responsibility to report on all human rights violations, regardless of the perpetrator. Of course, that can be risky. Many journalists have been attacked or intimidated in the West Bank. Here at the Al Haq Human Rights Center, we talked about the legal rights of journalists as well. It's not all serious, though, and one thing I've discovered, no matter where you go in the world, organizing a group photo is usually the biggest challenge of the day. Last but not least, Kuwait. One of the richest countries in the world, Kuwait also has one of the best human rights records in the region. Still, journalists here are eager to learn more about human rights. And there was a lot of lively debate from how to reconcile human rights with social, cultural or religious traditions to whether as a journalist it's better to get the story first or get the story right. And sadly, that is the end of the trip. I'm back here in snow-covered Canada. There's my dog, 
It's a bit bright. I want to say thanks to the government of Canada for sponsoring the trip and raising the profile of human rights reporting in other parts of the world. Until next time, I'm Bonnie Allen.